You may have heard me or seen me reference the outstanding textbook Introduction to Logic by the late, great Father Harry J. Gensler, either on this YouTube channel or perhaps at my website, amateurlogician.com. I've done at least a couple of videos on this very YouTube channel where I work through exercises from this textbook, Introduction to Logic by Father Gensler. Now, unfortunately, a year or so ago, Father Gensler passed away, but he definitely has a following, not only in terms of this great textbook, which I really like, but also in terms of the software that accompanies this book where you can work through exercises from logic. You can work through logic exercises, logic problems. There are several reasons why I really like this textbook, but one reason is that Father Gensler doesn't treat logic as merely a theoretical science. It is, or should be, first and foremost, a practical science about thinking about real-world argumentation. It grounds itself in concrete examples. We're thinking about concrete argumentation discovered in the real world, where you have arguments, you have proofs. It thinks about the general structures or patterns of those types of arguments in a language like propositional logic or predicate logic or modal logic or deontic logic. Let's look at the table of contents, and then I'll show you what I mean by this very concrete approach that you'll find in this textbook. Now, this is a modern mathematical symbolic book. There's no question about it. But it grounds itself in the concrete, and that's why I like it. It's a little bit more advanced than some other textbooks that are introductory in nature, but it's not too bad. And it's very readable, and you can self-study from this book for sure if you put in the time and dedication. So let's look at the table of contents. Chapter 1, of course, is Introduction. What is logic? What's a valid argument? What's an invalid argument? What's a sound argument? What's an unsound argument? Then part two, we get into syllogistic, informal, and inductive logic. Chapter two is on syllogistic logic, also known as categorical logic, which is basically a very simplified version of Aristotelian scholastic logic. Chapter three is on meaning and definitions. For example, what's the distinction between analytic and synthetic propositions? What's the difference between an a priori versus an a posteriori statement? Chapter 4 is on fallacies and argumentation. Chapter 5 is on inductive reasoning. For example, the statistical syllogism, probability calculations, analogy, John Stuart Mill's inductive methods, scientific laws, and so forth. Part 2 is on classic symbolic logic. Chapter 6, basic propositional logic. Chapter 7, Propositional Proofs. Chapter 8 gets into predicate logic. Here we have basic quantificational logic, and predicate logic is continued with Chapter 9, Relations and Identities, where we get into relational proofs and definite descriptions and so forth. But it contains more than just predicate logic and propositional logic, or categorical logic. It has modal logic, for instance. So Part 3 is on advanced symbolic systems. So chapter 10, basic modal logic, and modal logic deals with necessity and possibility. Chapter 11 is on further modal systems. And then chapter 12 is on deontic logic and imperative logic. This deals with ethical propositions. Chapter 13 is on belief logic. And then chapter 14 is a formalized ethical theory. It's somewhat idiosyncratic to the author's tastes here, so to speak, but it's still very interesting. Part 4 is on further vistas. Chapter 15, metalogic. Chapter 16, history of logic. And then we get into deviant logics, like many value logics or paraconsistent logic. Can we reject the law of contradiction, for instance? Chapter 18 is on the philosophy of logic. And like I said, there are many exercises and there are answers to some of them in the back. So you can check your work. Logic is not a spectator sport. And to get good at logic, you should be thinking about real-world argumentation and think about, can we put this into propositional logic or predicate logic or modal logic? So chapter 1, introduction, just defining some basic terminology like, what is logic? What does it even mean to say we have a valid argument versus an invalid argument and so forth? But let me show you, for example, just randomly, some exercises. These are concrete arguments. So it's not just a game of manipulating arbitrary symbols. So for example, let's say number eight, we have if the world had a beginning in time and it didn't just pop into existence without any cause, then the world was caused by God. If the world was caused by God, then there is a God. There is no God. 
Therefore, either the world has no beginning in time or just popped into existence without any cause. So that is an argument we can analyze with propositional logic. So this is actually a really good book, and down below I will provide a link to Amazon, and you can purchase this textbook if you so desire. At no extra charge to you, if you click through that link, I will then get a small commission, and that will help support this YouTube channel and will give me incentive to do more work for this YouTube channel. You can also visit my website at amateurlogician.com, and there you will find an extensive tutorial on traditional verbal style logic, and I also have references to many, many books on that website, including this one. Until next time, be well and good luck to you in your studies.